Hi, this is Dave Bartosowitz. I just want to give you a couple of ideas today. I want you to think about things. But, you know, you got to realize if you're LDS watching this, there are many people who know the truth. Uh, LDS basically comes out and they claim that they are the only ones that have the true church. Well, you got to realize that there are hundreds and hundreds of millions of, of believers, people who are born again with his spirit, who love him. And I want to teach you a little bit about the plan of salvation. The plan of salvation for for those who are believers, who are followers, who are Christians, is a little bit different than the plan of salvation in Mormonism. The plan of salvation is Mormonism is is really about, you know, there's a pre-existence, that we're all created spiritually, that, that Jesus was our spiritual brother, that we had to obtain a body and, and receive a body. So the spiritual aspect of our body came down into a body and then we get tested and we go through this process of, of doing different things and hopefully glorifying God and, and coming to the LDS church so that we will know that we have the right and true church. And then we get all these different callings, all these different things that, that we could show the church, the LDS church, that we're doing the right things. And in essence, they believe that that church is, is in essence God. So we have three different glories that we go through depending upon how favorable we were and the things that we did in this life. And so there's different glories that they have. And then ultimately at the end, if you become, go to the highest glory, which is celestial, is a celestial, terrestrial, telestial glory. If you go to the celestial glory, that actually you'll um, have the chance to become a God and then be um, sealed hopefully with your wife eternally, that you and your wife can become gods of the planet. And so this is sort of this Mormon teaching. If you do all this, you have to repent, you have to do all these things, which we do too as Christians. But the plan of salvation for us, in, in essence, Mormons don't believe that they were actually sinners uh, from the very beginning. They don't believe that. They believe uh, differently. They believe that you you acquire this sin. It's not, it wasn't in you from the very you know day one. Okay, I want to give a little heads up about the truth about this. Now, the plan of salvation, when you got to remember that if the Bible says it, then that settles it, right? If the Bible says it, that settles it. So the thing that's really important for, for Mormons to understand the plan of salvation is that, that you know, we are created with body and a soul in a spirit, right? Remember Jesus basically blew the spirit, God blew the spirit into Adam and he became animated. It was very uh, significant. Adam became, you know, a man. He, he became a functional man. But, you know, you know the story. I don't have to get involved in this, but obviously Adam uh, was in a position where he, he did something and Eve, they did something wrong, disobeyed God and, and they were left. They were called out of the um, area of Garden of Eden, right? So it's kind of interesting too, just a little heads up, but I don't want to go on a rabbit trail, but you know, you look at the Garden of Eden, that's where our spirit died. We are alienated from God. And now when Jesus went to the garden, um, he went to a garden at the same time for to, to make us alive, really. And he was beginning that process. So I, I think it's kind of interesting looking at the gardens. Obviously, we believe that, that Jesus took upon our sin. And he then really, um, through his blood, he was able to allow us, give us the right to come back to God. So we are made up of a body. And we are made up of a soul. And we are also made up of a spirit. Now in Adam, you got to realize that our, our spirit, right, was like dead after we, we were alienated from God because he disobeyed God. And now we became um, really like a, a dead battery, really not having the spirit within us. Um, and so what, what happened, why Jesus did what he did is because the plan was for us to what? To come back to, to God, come back to God in that sense, so that God can make us alive. And how do you do it? You know, John 3, 16, we believe on his son. He loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that if we believe on him, we would have eternal life, right? That's uh, John 3, 16. But there's also Ephesians. I want you to read Ephesians uh, 1, 13 and 14. You'll get to see that and understand that it, through our trusting in Jesus and believing in him, that um, he gives us the the sealing of the Holy Spirit. That's God 
coming in. So we had a dead spirit, right? We had a dead spirit from Adam. Our spirit was not really there. The soul was. The soul is really the personality. It's the intellect. It's the 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 fiber of of really our personality of who we are. The intellect, the the values, the feelings that we have. The body is really the 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 tent, if you will. But the spirit was not really there. So we needed to be born of God again. And the plan is that you know through Adam we all died, right? And Jesus came. And he restored us. He became the curse. So he became the curse and took upon all sin. And now we are no longer alienated if we believe in his son. But one thing that you need to understand is that you need to confess. You absolutely need to confess that um, that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior. If you confess, like at Romans 10, 9, it tells us if we confess that Jesus is our Lord, then we are saved, meaning that God enters us. So we become infused with the Spirit again, but we need to do our part. Okay, and that's the body of Christ. That's his bride. We become his bride at that point. So I want you guys to understand that the plan really is that we are all sinners. We did not have the Spirit with us, and God's Spirit wasn't in us. But Jesus did what he did. He became the curse. He restored us to God through his blood, and his blood makes us holy now. So we are holy, and we are made righteous, and we are in a position in our lives that we are written in the Lamb's book of life. So when that happens, when you confess is the time the Holy Spirit enters. And, and then God chooses you. So he puts the light back in us. And so our dead battery is no longer dead, but it's made alive. And we are now his. We become his child. So one of the things that I want, to, want you to understand is that's the plan. The plan was that we are dead. You know, we died. We needed to be born again. And then when we accept Jesus, that happens. And then we are written in the book, Lamb's Life. No one's going to take that away. Jesus said, no one will snatch you out of my hands. So I want you to know that. And what I want you guys to do, if those, even Mormons, who haven't yet confessed with their mouth that Jesus is their Lord. If you don't know the place, if you're not sure where the place was, and if you can't recall where you put your trust and your faith in Jesus, then I'm concerned if you were actually ever written it in the book of life, in his book of life, in Revelations. So if you can't remember that, that, that moment, that, that transference of his spirit coming into you, then please, please, I'm begging you, confess with your mouth right now. Get an area where you put your trust in your faith that you believe in the Jesus of the Bible, that you are willing to, to surrender to him and that he is your Lord and he is your savior and that you are committed. Read Romans 10, 9, please, and confess. Let him come into you. That's the baptism of fire. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's Jesus's baptism. That's the one that's going to save you. Certainly we do the baptism um, after that of water. That's just to allow people to know that we are committed. We are his. But that's not the, the baptism of salvation. The baptism of salvation literally is the baptism of fire. So remember these things. And I want to share with you just one other thing. I think it's so important, so important that when you realize that you're a Christian, you go out now and, and you want to please the Lord because he saved you. He saved you and you want to be a disciple of him and you want to be sanctified. But again, at this moment, if you have accepted Jesus, you are made innocent. You are justified. That's, that's what it means. You are made innocent. It's not by works. It's by your confession of faith. And when you confess with your faith, then God inputs his spirit. And he did that. If you remember again, on one of my shows that I had, I had the veil, right? That God rent the veil in the temple. He rent it after Jesus paid for your sins, bled on the cross, and that at that moment when he died, God said no more, and he rent the veil in two, and at that moment he made a decision to enter the bodies of us so that we could be born again and made whole and no longer alienated from God with a high priest in a temple, 
but with the high priest, which is Jesus Christ now, who is our high priest. He's our high priest over the house of God. There is no other high priest outside of Jesus. He is it, the only one that we praise, we worship, and we thank him, and we surrender, and we sacrifice our lives for him, for the will of the kingdom to be continued and and just have people come to know him. I pray this, uh, this message of the plan of salvation really helped you guys. God bless you guys. Have a great day, and um, I'll talk to you soon. God bless.